for the largest oil producer in Africa is pledging to cut its emissions to net zero by 2060. Nigeria's president made the commitment at the COP26 summit this week. Mohamedou Buhari says his country would make the change by using resources such as natural gas. And he's requesting international support to fund projects for the transition. Nigeria would reach its goal about a decade later than most other countries. Well, Mr Buhari says his nation is fully aware of the climate change threat. I do not think anyone in Nigeria needs persuading of the need for urgent action on the environment. For Nigeria, climate change is not about the perils of tomorrow, but what is happening today. Nigeria is committed to net zero by 2060. Well, time now for the exchange where we explore the consequences of climate change in Nigeria. Earlier I spoke about it with the country's Minister of State for Environment, Sharon Ikiazo. Sharon, we heard from the president of Nigeria speak at COP26 describing the fact that you're already seeing the impact of climate change in Nigeria right now. He, he spoke about fertile lands becoming desert, a growing number of floods and droughts, erosion. Take us through what you're seeing. Like uh, one of the most impacted uh, areas in Nigeria that has been affected by climate change is the Lake Chad uh, Basin. The I mean, the lake has shrunk to almost uh, over half of its size now. And the livelihoods of a lot of our people depend on the Lake Chad uh, region through fishing, animal husbandry, and farming. So this has really been devastating on the livelihoods of our people. So climate change is real. It's staring us in the face. Besides the drying up of the Lake Chad, we have issues of uh, flood taking over vast amounts of farmland. How do our people adapt to this? This is all the effects of climate change and also the coastal erosion and the rising sea level is wiping our communities in the coastal regions of Nigeria. So the effects of climate change is devastating in Africa and to us in Nigeria. Sharon, Nigeria is Africa's biggest crude producer. It's joined some of the world's largest energy exports, exporters like Saudi Arabia, like Russia, in pledging to eliminate these planet warming emissions by 2060. Certainly a great aim. Uh, but there are questions about the time frame when other countries are aiming for a decade earlier. Can Nigeria do better? The issue of uh, energy transition and the net zero race has to take into account the different uh, peculiarities of every country and every region. And we being an oil producing country, this is one of the resources that our economy relies on. We are very committed to the race to net zero, but we have made it clear that the role of gas must be recognized by international uh, communities and also to allow different countries to get to net zero at their own pace using the resources that they have. So to us, we're committed to the net zero, but uh, it has to be 2060. Some countries are 2070, some are earlier, but for developing countries, it will definitely be a lot uh, later than that. But we in Nigeria have developed an energy transition plan that if well implemented, will get us to net zero by 2060. One, one of the biggest challenges for Nigeria, I guess, is the fact that fossil fuels account for about 60% of government, government revenue, 90% of foreign exchange earnings, and developing countries are facing growing pressure to cut emissions sooner. Uh, but we have to remind our viewers that 40% of the population in Nigeria uh, don't have access to uh, electricity. 80 million are living on less than a dollar a day. So uh, just explain how tricky, how challenging it is to balance uh, cutting emissions while, without sacrificing the ability to lift people out of poverty. Exactly. Very tricky, but it's a balancing act. We have low emission uh, fuels, like LPG, for instance. We are capturing our gas that we've been flaring 
using that uh, captured gas to uh, create the energy gap, especially with the cooking fuels that we use in Nigeria, and also for electrification and uh, using gas for cars, using gas for industries in Nigeria instead of fossil fuel like um, oil and PMS. Then also, through using uh, our natural resources, we'll be able to get our people out of poverty by creating jobs, green jobs with low emission uh, fuels like the gas we have been talking about. But for us to say we will stop gas now, we'll virtually throw our people into uh, poverty. So we're trying to balance it through implementation of our energy transition plan after each phase to see the next phase we'll go on to, to make sure it's all inclusive, just and fair. So what help does Nigeria need to transition away from fossil fuels in terms of innovation, technology, financing? Oh, we, we do need a lot of uh, financing. Our energy transition plan that we have put in place, this is based on uh, data and evidence. We need at least $400 billion to be able to transit, and we do need a lot of uh, technology transfer as well. It's one of the areas that the negotiations are going on at COP, the issue of uh, technology transfer and financing. And when it comes to financing as well during COP, it shouldn't just be financing for mitigation only, but for adaptation, because our people are very vulnerable to climate change as we speak. So there should be a balance of uh, financing for mitigation and adaptation. Sharon Ikarazor, Nigeria's Environment Minister, we appreciate your time so much and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you.